Uh, I would like to start out with just each one of you being able to introduce yourselves and give us perhaps your title and how you contribute to this amazing industry. Can we start? No, Go ahead, Sarah. Hi, everybody. It's my first NARUC, so I'm so excited to be here. The energy's amazing. Um, I'm Sarah Bonner with Zillow. I've been there 16 years, so basically since it started, I've seen it go from a startup to um, what we are today. And my job is on the industry relations side, so we work with all the different brands, all the different affinity groups, and just make, making sure that we are educating you guys on what Zillow has available for the industry. Um, I'm Michael Valdez. I am the Chief Growth Officer for eXp Realty. Uh, I've been with eXp just shy of three years. I started as president of their global division. Just uh, last month was promoted to CGO. Um, and, you know, this has always been my NARREP familia. I've been sitting on the CBOG board for eight years now, I think it is. And this has always been so great because this is the community that elevates our community. Juan has been my brother for a long time. And so I have the honor of being the only C-suite executive that's Latino of a publicly traded real estate company. And it's my honor to be there with all of you. Juan Martinez, former national president, uh, Americana family of companies, a president uh, or founder of Americana Family of Companies, and in one of that is Century 21 Americana, our partnership with Century 21. So excited to be here, excited to see all of you, and looking forward to a great three or four days. Amazing. So I'd like to start off our conversation with talking about, it's really a two-part question. Uh, and the first piece of it is, how are you supporting agents in the shifting market? And then the second piece of it is, we know, some of us have been in the industry for a really long time, but there's also a lot of people who have not been in the industry for a really long time. Just real quick, by the raise of hands, who has been here in this industry for less than three years? Please raise your hand. Okay, so quite a few. Uh, so the second piece of that is we wanna talk about the difference between a down market and what it was back in, like, a few years ago and versus now. So just to repeat it one more time, how are you supporting agents in the shifting market and then how is this shift different than others? We'll start with you, Juan. So the question is? <laughs> how are you supporting agents in the shifting market? Um, let's see here. I, I would say that um, the market is shifting. The West Coast, we're seeing a heavier shift, something like a 40, 45% drop in transactions in the last 120 days or so. And it's been, it's been um, it's, you know, it's a, big, it's a major drop. Uh, we see it in Nevada, we see it in Arizona. I know some of the biggest brokers in the country. They're not seeing so much, uh, so much of a big shift, 10 to 15% maybe, overall average. So it, I would assume that it's coming. West Coast has, has been hit hard. California's getting hit. I get mixed feelings in, in regards to California. But there is a shift. And so uh, we're talking, last year there was 6.5 million transactions that happened last year. And I would say the average for the country is five to five and a half million transactions. This year, we're probably gonna end up at 4.5 million. We have a rolling 12 months, 4.8 4 million, we're probably gonna end about 4.5 million. You're talking about two million transaction drop. That's a major deal. And then you're talking about four million sides. That's like four million commission checks, uh, the reduction you know, that's gonna happen this year. The question is, are you guys prepared for that? Uh, we're seeing, we'll probably see three, four, five hundred thousand agents exit the real estate business, um, you know, this, this in the next six to nine months. So your question is, what was your question? How what are, are we you, doing? How are you supporting your agents through the shifting market? Forgi forgive me. Um, how are You're we supporting? You're the godfather, Juan. Juan you, you can't want me to ask write as it many you? questions as you want. No. no. <laughs> So, so I, I would say this is that we got to get back to the fundamentals and, and in my opinion with the market strong, whatever your opinion is of the market, the market's strong, the market's soft, inventory's high, inventory's low, demand's strong, demand's low, it doesn't matter. You should always be doing the fundamentals at all times, right? Uh, and, and 100%. I would say that uh, this is a people business and, uh, and we have to be, we have to uh, talk to people every single day 
and some of us maybe got a little bit lazy in the last 12 or 24 months, or this whole pandem pandemic has caused people to work from home and be mobile and all this other crazy stuff. We gotta get back in the office. We gotta go to work, we gotta dress up, we gotta hustle, we gotta be in lead generation three to five hours a day, we gotta be presenting. I don't care if you're an originator or your listing agent, buying agent, you have to hustle every single day. That has never changed, but now you have to hustle more to do the same of what you did last year or the prior year. Back to the fundamentals. Gosh, that is a, that's a great thing. That's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, Juan. Michael? And sometimes your office can be virtual, and sometimes you can be an avatar. And it's, uh, it's something where EXP is the largest independent real estate company in the world. Uh, 85,000 agents now across 22 countries. And it's now the idea that technology helped a lot with the pandemic for our growth, for the idea of what uh, Juan is sort of saying in really having the fundamentals of understanding the basics of this industry. So whatever the market is, our job for those of you that are real estate professionals and real estate agents is just to bring buyer and seller together. We don't determine price, the market does. And so that's something that we need to make sure that we remember that it's just our level of service. As Juan said, this is a people business. That's what will never change. I was in production during 2008 and I had the best year of my entire career because you had to become agile and shift. I came from a banking background and so during the crisis of 2008, 2009, I actually represented funds that we're looking for larger bulk deals. So remember, your client can be whomever your client is in whatever market we're in. But you need to remember the basics, as Juan had sort of said, and remember, you know, for, the, for a lot of you that have just entered the business in, say, the last four years, you never had to do a price reduction. You never had to sort of worry about a down market. And that was actually a disservice to all of you. Because there was a lot of things where, you know, if you had multiple offers, you probably never ever called the other agents of the other eight offers you had because you had somebody in hand. You have to remember that this also is a community. This industry is a community. Make sure you remember that. It doesn't matter who you work for. We're all in the same industry. You know, all of us here work for different companies, yet we're a family. And it's all of us in this room represent different organizations. We only represent one industry. And we need to remember that as we sort of go out there, that community and the people sitting next to you are actually your partners, not your competitors. You. Well said, Michael. Thank you, brother. All right, Sarah. <laughs> I was supposed to be sitting in between you guys, I think. <laughs> She was supposed to separate the Cubans. Yeah. Something happened. I don't know what happened. Um, yeah, so we're doing a lot of things. Uh, the first thing I would say is we provide a ton of market data and stats and just information about what's going on nationally and in your local markets. Um, you can Google it. You can go right to Zillow and find it. But I think really knowing your numbers is so important because it's going to give the consumer's perspective so right now, it seems like we're in a down market, of course, because it's down from last year. Right. But really, we're, we're coming into a more balanced market. So point. it's not necessarily a down market. I mean, we've gone from a red hot market to a hot market to right. maybe like a warm market. I mean, we're still not in a down market necessarily. Um, and I think being able to have all that data at your fingertips helps give that perspective to your homeowners and make some feel, or, or buyers, and make them feel more at ease going into the transaction. Like, I know you guys are seeing a lot of cancellations right now, but we just did a whole uh, study, and cancellations are only just a tiny bit smaller than where they were pre-pandemic. So we're actually, like I said, going into kind of more of a normal, a normalized market, a more balanced market, which is actually a good thing for buyers. They'll have more options, they'll have more time, and they won't feel pressured to move really fast when something comes on the market. So that, and then um, I'd say also, we're really focused now on software and how can we build tools that are A, gonna help you win listings because it's going to be more competitive with two million, two million less transactions to actually win the listing. So how can we bring more tools to help you win the listing? 
And then how can we just bring more tools to the whole industry and to the consumers to help bring more transparency, more digitalization yeah. of the whole real estate process? Because it can be kind of siloed and clunky. Like how can we smooth it out and help people just move through in a really confident way to their end goal of getting shelter? I love that. And just like there are some people that are new into this real estate industry, when our real estate agents and lenders are having these conversations with perhaps someone that's a new homeowner, right? They don't know the difference between markets either. And so let's have a conversation around what would be your best advice to give our audience today on what specific conversation to have with a consumer in regards to the market to bring in some data, perhaps some other tools that you have so we can get them out of that scarcity mindset into why this is a good opportunity and idea to get into homeownership today. My, my thoughts here, you're mentioning technology. My thoughts are on technology is that there's so much technology today and everything is changing so much that technology has complicated, uh, has complicated the industry for consumers, which is a beautiful thing because the more technology complicates the consumer, the consumer needs all of you now more than ever. You guys following me here? Too much technology uh, pushes away communication, human to human communication, people to people, and we are in a people business. And the best way to manage consumers, to find consumers, is person to person, belly to belly, face to face, over the phone, and we've, we, we've gone away from that so much, especially the last couple years because of the pandemic, and really the only thing that make people happy are people. And you guys gotta get, you guys gotta understand that. If you want, uh, it, uh, you know, from 2001 to 2011, I sold over 4,000 homes. Uh, my best year was 584, which Mark Demas kicked my ass because I think he finished like at 3,500 transactions. So he, he broke the record there. But my thoughts are, it always has been, is we are human communicators. We should be talking to people every single day. Sure, you need CRMs, you need software, you need all that stuff, but be happy that all that technology and all that disruption came into the marketplace because all it is is the consumer needs you more and more. And, uh, and I don't want Sarah and Michael, uh, I just met Sarah and she's great, she's been at Zillow for a long time, and I don't want anybody to think that, you know, we're, uh, I'm saying anything because of my, uh, because of our partner here at Zillow, Tanarep. Uh, it is, so please don't, this is just a very different perspective. <laughs> uh, very different. He said he wouldn't do that that yeah, he, he, he did. He did. People are the only ones that make people happy. So don't get fooled that technology in the future and software and all that stuff is going to beat our business. Let me share another thought here. Um, it is, in the, in the last six months of meltdown that has happened, uh, the publicly traded companies that are in the real estate space, the residential real estate space, I think they lost like 87, 90% market value. The disruptors who, and I'm not talking about who Michael is with, okay? No, 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 no. Nudia, no. you're next. Be careful. You're next. We no. know. We know. <laughs> There we go. Let, let, let me just. Adelante, Juan. Let, let, thank this you. is getting exciting. You. <laughs> by, by the way, you guys have no idea how proud I am of Michael Valdez being the chief growth officer of one of the largest, you know, brokerages in the country. Mm. I, I admire him. I love him. It makes me so proud to see him. You know, the, the fastest growing, you know, brand. I think. I, I don't want to put any. That's true, know. actually. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. Um, it, and for him to lead that, it makes me super proud. But back, but back to, but. <laughs> however, back to the disruption and the disruptors. There are companies out there, these publicly traded companies, I'm not gonna mention names, but they wanna put you out of the business through their technology. And guess what happened in the last 90, 120 days? From their peak of, of market value, market cap of what they were worth, they have dropped 90%. I'm not gonna give you guys any examples except for one. <laughs> Open Door had a value, I think, of something like 16 billion, and today is worth 1.9 billion. The disruptor has disrupted themselves. Give a big round of applause for Open Door. <laughs> uh, 
because I want to crush them all day long, just like they want to put you out of the business. Okay? So congrats to the disruptors. They have self-disrupted. <laughs> Offer pad goes with that, too. What were you saying? <laughs> This is a typical Juan Martinez uh, experience, if you haven't, which we love. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to Michael, just to honor the time. So Michael, what tools can you give our real estate agents in the audience of how to have these uh, conversations of this transition in the market with the consumers? You know, it, it, the power comes with, with understanding the market. And, and I actually agree with Sarah. I think that we're coming into a balanced market. And I think that the, the consumer is still trying to sort of get their, their grips around it. And I think we have to also remember what the client wants. Clients' needs are first and foremost. So with somebody that bought a place last year and they're looking for a 20 to 25% gain, obviously we need to educate that that's not happening at this point in time. So these are all, I mean, remember the market is cyclical. Right? It's sort of like we've had an up market for a long period of time. It was actually longer than most cycles. And so now we're coming into what is the natural cycle of our industry. And so we have to help be, we're the experts. We're the ones that have a license. So we need to help navigate those people because they don't know how to sort of like navigate these waters. And so now you guys have to be that trusted professional that you are, were, 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 were doing now for their needs. So you need to now help them navigate these waters. And so that is what our role is now. And so in understanding what the historical um, uh, process of what a natural flow of a market does, it is very difficult when you're in it, but there is another side of this. So that is what we need to sort of make sure that we are educating them in this process. And like my dear friend Juan has done for so many years in the front line and been able to sort of do that so successfully and how he has grown his business. And I admire you so much as well, Thank you. my dear friend. Thank you. Sarah, we still have time to switch you in the okay. middle. Okay, we have a little time. <laughs> Good. Uh, um, Education is going to be super important. We're starting to see a little surge of uh, first-time home buyers. I think it was about 37% was first-time home buyers last year. They were having a hard time getting in because you needed to have the money there to go execute quickly. Um, this year, we saw about 45% of people be first-time home buyers. So we're starting to, you know, people are locked into these low. Uh, mortgage rates, so they're maybe staying a little bit, allowing the first-time home buyers to come in. So it's so important that you guys are educated. Um, we're seeing a lot of people come to Zillow, at least, when we, when we survey them, uh, trying to get mortgage ready. There's about half of them are trying to figure out financing before they're even ready to talk to an agent. So I think that's another part where education really comes in, is helping these people, like, when, when we do find something, you need to be ready to move on financing. Uh, and so helping them navigate that to become um, mortgage ready, and, and we're doing a lot of work around that. The other big thing we're seeing is consumers do want you to be tech forward when you go to your listing presentation. So um, a big area we're investing is in virtual floor plans and virtual touring and stuff. I mean, we're finding those houses get about 80% more views on our site and about 50% more saves just because they've got that tech in there so people feel a little more comfortable um, picking up the phone and actually making the tour, uh, calling to go see it in person. So we're investing huge in that. That's a free app that agents can download and actually shoot it themselves if you wanted to, or your photographer can do it and get it on the site. Um, and lastly, I'm really excited to say we have a transaction management solution, dot loop, you guys may know. Uh, in the fourth quarter, that will be coming out all in Spanish. So uh, awesome. we'll have the whole transaction software in Spanish coming up, which is very That's cool. That's amazing. Awesome. Very yeah. nice. Beautiful. L Nuria, let me, let me uh, answer in regards to how we help people. Um, so obviously the basics, uh, obviously the basics. Nora, do you have an issue with what I'm saying? <laughs> so 
what we do right now, we have made a shift in the last 90 days, and, and Nevada, Arizona is much more drastic than most markets, but I think it all falls in the same, is that um, is what we're covering is pricing, pricing reductions, and the importance of it. I mean, we've been teaching probably 60 or 70, day, 70 days just simply on pricing. There's um, all these formulas uh, to be able to do CMAs, there's all this software, and what happens is a lot of agents in the marketplace right now are using old data and old information. The real information is really in the available properties. And putting yourself as a buyer and saying, would I buy this home? Too many times we go into the kitchen table and we wanna own the price, okay, or, we, or the seller wants here and we want here, but both of you are wrong because the market has shifted so hard. So maybe it's not affecting you in your market as much, but it's probably coming soon. So you have to learn how to price properties, and pricing properties is saying, I don't own the price, seller, you don't own the price, we're gonna work together, but the market is shifting, the market controls the price, and I need to respond to the market. So one, learning to not own the price, number one, and then number two, doing what you're supposed to do, which is service the seller and call them every seven days until that property sells. You know, if you think about it, when I talk about communication and replacing technology with, with communication, we prospect, we do social media, we do whatever to take the listing, okay? Then it is uh, we, we qualify for motivation, we present in person, we get the listing contract, we call them weekly, we get them under contract, we talk to them two or three times a week throughout the whole process, and then we close the deal if it doesn't cancel. That is called human communication. And, the, and again, that, uh, that is the fundamentals and that is what we should be doing every day. And then one other thought is that if you wanna control your business and control your market for, you, for those of you that are listening and buying agents here, here, is learn to control the inventory. I said that 10 years ago in a lot of speeches, you know, many years ago in NARA. If you wanna control your income and you wanna control the revenue, control the inventory, okay? Too many of us Latino agents are work the buyer side too heavy and, and never learned the skills to really list properties in high volume. But I guarantee you, if you guys were listing 20 or 30 times more than what you're doing today, you can control your market, the buyers will come to you, okay, and then you will be much more successful. Don't worry about all the hype that the market's falling or this is happening or two million less transactions. Focus on your business plan, compete against your business plan and do what you're supposed to do. I'll give you one example here that I'll, that I'll give credit to. Nora Geary started with me in 2005 uh, as a team member to my team and was with me for seven years. Today she does $2 million, 225 transactions a year. With the market down 40%, I've never seen her as excited as she is today in the future in her working with those families, those hundreds of families that she serves every year. Nora, could you please stand? Let me give you a round of applause, come on. Yes, Nora! Yeah. Stand, Nora, come on. As shy as she is, and so much money that she has. <laughs> but I think the greatest opportunities come in down markets, right? So I'm super excited for a shifting market, because that's where the greatest opportunities come for consumers, for our industry, for us to be able to, again, navigate through any sort of market and grow to the other side. Yeah. No, this has been great, great information. We're, just to again honor the time, I wanna ask one last question and maybe if you, each one of you can take just one minute on it. I know that people here are hungry. People here are driven to grow. That's why they're in this room. What piece of advice would you give them to help them scale their business right now? Juan, one minute. Uh-oh. See? Yeah. <laughs> what do you do to scale your business? Right now. Uh, I, I, I would say you, you get obsessed with your business and, um, and in this business, if you want to make half a million, a million or two million dollars a year, guess what, you have to work. The world of being mobile, the world of technology and the world of all that stuff, the reality is if you don't show up to work every day and be ready to work and willing to put 10 or 12, 14 hours, then you ain't gonna make more than a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. But if you want to make a million or two million or three million dollars a year, a year, it's gonna take a lot of hard work, it's gonna take dedication, it's gonna, it's, you're gonna to have to have real numbers, you gotta track your numbers, you can't be on social media all day and expect to do two or three, four hundred transactions. Okay, so you have, you, to learn, you have to learn how to lead generate, you have to learn talk to people, 
okay, uh, quality on the amount of contacts that you make every single day. You talk to, you can't, you can't make a million dollars and talk to 10 people a day. You wanna, right. you wanna make a million dollars, you gotta talk to maybe 100 people a day, okay? And maybe get your team members, if you're doing that much business, to, for them to put in 50 contacts a day where you're talk, talking to three or four or 500 people uh, on a daily basis. That's big money, that's big revenue, and ultimately, if you wanna go down that path over the next three to five years, you have to have a strong desire to do it and a work ethic to back it up. Um, for a few of you that have been around for a long time, thank one you. One Cuban minute one. <laughs> for, for those of you that, that have been around for a long time, if I say hard work, you would say, this group is not trained. This is a whole new group here at Anara. Hard work? More money. Okay, that's it. You want Beautiful. more money, you gotta work hard. I love it. Michael. Awesome. So I would say that you have to earn your place at the table for that consumer. Know what value you're bringing. Truly be the expert. You have to be able, especially in a shifting market, to add value to a consumer. There is a lot of information that any consumer can get you know, online. Right, it's sort of like thanks to Sarah and others, but information is readily available. You have to bring the value, which is in scarcity. And that's what you need to do every single time in order to be able to excel and exceed in any market that there is. I, I agree with that 100%, by the way. Uh, I, do, I do think this here is that Look at your city and look how much past clients and center of influence you have. You got two buckets, the people you know, the people you don't know. If there's two, three, four, five million people in your city and you're sitting on 50, 100, or 200 people, not until you grow that thing to 500, 1,000, 2, or 3,000 people are you gonna make the big money. And then going back to what Michael says, the more value you bring the folks here and the more loyal they become to you, you would be the tribal leader, read the book, Tribes, Co-founder um, Ernie Reyes of NAREP, you know, shared that with, with me a long time ago to read the book, the read the book Tribes by Seth Godin. And you, if you have this bucket of past client center of influence and that's your foundation of your business, and you bring massive value to them and you take care of them and you nurture them, no software, no technology, no disruptor will replace that customer. You will replace you. You will be there for them long term. That's the way you grow a business. Become obsessed with your clients. I love it. Sarah, obsessed. bring it home for us. I have 19 seconds. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you got this, Sarah. Okay, I got it. I got it. Um, no, that's great advice. Um, I'll, I'll just leave you. We just did a survey of about 5,000 buyers and asked the question, what was important to you in a realtor or an agent? And number one, and this is every year we ask this question, trustworthiness was by far the first thing that people really wanted. Number two was responsiveness, I think which kind of goes back to what you're seeing. Number three was um, local market knowledge. I'll say number 11 was commission rate. So it, that's not as important to people necessarily as trusting you, getting the answers that they need, and you bringing knowledge to the table. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, we have another minute and a half. <laughs> no, can we please give it up for this powerful panel that we just experienced today? It, since they added a minute to us, any any last thoughts that you may have? Take for it away, Juan. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> go, 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 go to work. Stop messing around at home. Stop shopping online. Stop, you know be this mobile <laughs> entrepreneur, it doesn't work, get back to the office, get suited up, go to work, crush it, crush the competition, take number one market share. Love it. Michael, last thought? Remember that the only competition is whatever you did yesterday. Yes, yeah. Sarah. Oh, goodness. <laughs> that was my closer there. Um, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> well, with that, thank you so much for experiencing this with us. And 
Can we please give him a huge round of applause?